Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a solar panel. Uh, a few things you need is a picture frame, empty, about 20 inches by 16 inches. I just got mine at a used store for a few dollars. Then you're going to need some wire cutters, electrical tape, a micro USB cable, which usually comes with a little phone battery pack that you buy, uh, just standard rosin core solder wire, a bus wire, um, which will be linked in the description, a soldering iron, and then these B-grade solar cells that I've found. So they are 100% efficient. However, they've got small aesthetic deficiencies like this crack. However, they still perform the exact same as a perfectly okay one. All of the stuff will be linked to in the description if you want to do this project yourself. It only takes a few hours. Okay, the first step is going to be to wire these I mean solder these solar cells together. So these cables, or the tabs on both of the solar cells, need to go underneath the next one. So they're gonna be arranged something like this. However, all the soldering parts are on the back, so it's gonna be easier to flip them over. So if you line them up with the tabs up, and so they kind of line up like this, you're gonna to need to build four, or three trains of four cells. And then they'll be wired together in series. So the first step is going to be to put a glob of solder on each of these white tabs here. If you've never soldered before, it's actually quite easy. I'm sure there's videos out there that'll show you pretty quick. So you're going to put a little glob on each of these white tabs. Once each little white tab has a glob of solder on it, you're gonna to wanna to line them up again. And then you're gonna fold these wires down on top. You need like a little piece of cardboard or something to hold them in place while you solder them down. Um, but I'll just show you two to start as an example. So you grab your soldering iron, and then these tabs are gonna to need to fold down across all three. So if you use your hand to hold the tabbing wire down, it obviously gets quite hot, but sometimes you need to, just cause it doesn't wanna cooperate and just keep going. You're basically just building a train of these solar cells. Okay, so there's your first train of four solar cells, but be careful, they're extremely fragile, uh, especially when like flipping them over or anything like that. So you can just leave that on the side now. You're gonna need to make two more of those. So start off by laying these out in opposite directions. So if the tapping wire is all running down on the first one, you make it go up on the next one, and so on. So now to connect these four or three solar panel trains together, we need to use this bus wire. It's just a thicker version of the tapping wire on each of the solar cells. I think you should just be able to cut it with scissors. You're going to want to cut off the excess. Try and leave a little bit of room just so it's easier to work with. Because you're going to need the excess on the next cell. So now these pieces need to be connected along the top of these so that these three little nodes are connected as well. So basically think of it as the top of this cell needs to go to the bottom of this cell. And so I actually messed this up a bit. This, need, this piece needs to be longer to connect to this one. It's easy to just take it off with the soldering gun. And that's okay, we'll need to use this piece again later anyways. So first we need to cut a piece. 
for bus stripping. It'll connect these two to two that are gonna go here. This piece of bus stripping is gonna need something to connect to in this middle column. And so you're gonna need to put two smaller strips that are just gonna extend off the bottom of this. Now this longer piece that we cut is gonna connect all four. So we're just gonna have to flip over. So we're just gonna have to connect these three as well. So same thing, cut off the excess of a different tab. Now same as the other train, we're going to need to cut a little bit of bus stripping just to extend those out so they can be connected. So you can kind of consider this as like the start of the whole circuit. And so these two need to be connected together. So now we're gonna to have to cut another longer piece to connect these two here. And we're also gonna to need to extend the bottom of this one. So we'll extend it first. Same as before, we need to extend it to put a little piece of bus wire. Flipped over. Now we need a long piece here. The last step before the solar panels are all connected together is to attach one more piece of bus stripping. to the end. So this unit is now ready to be wired into your battery bank uh, through that micro USB cable. Okay, now take the micro USB cable that came with your battery bank. You can just use normal scissors for this, but you're gonna need to cut off the USB end. Now you're gonna find four cables inside. And this is where the wire strippers come in. Mine are not very good, so it's kind of a battle. So you'll see a red and a white, and a green and a black. The red and the white is the positive, the green and the black is the negative. So you're just gonna need to strip these wires down far enough where they'll be able to reach both sides of your solar panel. Okay, once you think you have enough of the cable stripped, you can take off the rest of this uh, kind of metallic coating on it. Just cut it off. Red and white go together. Black and green go together. So that's why I take the electrical tape and I just put a little loop around them. you're gonna need to strip both ends of these. So you can use the wire cutters again. They're pretty thin, so it can be difficult to get them fully stripped. Okay, so once they're both stripped, I like to twist them together, just so they're easier to solder to the same piece. Same thing with the red and white pair. Each of these cells is about a half a volt each, and so I brought out a multimeter here just to show you. Even inside under uh, artificial light, it's producing about 5.5 volts, which is gonna be more than enough to charge the battery bank. You can also see that the bottoms of the solar panel are what the positive side needs to be hooked up to. All right, we're gonna try it with this battery bank here. And so we take the positive end, which is the white and red end. We connect it to the underside of the panel, so that's the positive end, and the black and white to the top. 
and there we see it is charging. So now we're gonna wire this through the back, put on the glass, and hang it up in a window. Okay, now you can take a screwdriver or a pen, whatever you want, and poke a hole through the backing of the picture frame. So this was the negative side. And so I'm just gonna wire this up through the back hole. Okay. On the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. Poke a hole through the backing of the picture frame and feed the wire through. And then the final step is just gonna be to solder the wire to this bus stripping on either side, and then we just need to put the casing back on the picture frame. So the solar panel is basically done. <laughs> And there we go. So now we can go hang this in a window and charge this battery pack. It should give us about three phone charges per day, so you can charge your phone overnight. Bring it with you during the day if you need. Let's go give it a test. All right, I put the solar panel just in between two window panes. It's winter here, so we don't get much sunlight, but you'll see even that much will still let this phone charge. And so if I leave this during the day, in my homemade fancy holder. When I get home, I can just charge it overnight, then keep it charging during the day, and then always have my phone powered by the sun.